The Nazca lines are a collection of long straight lines and giant geometric figures and geoglyphs, the signs or motifs etched into the ground, located in the Peruvian coastal plain about 250 miles or 400 kilometers south of Lima, Peru. Nobody knows for sure when the lines were created or what their purpose is. The Nazca lines can only be fully appreciated when viewed from the air, given their massive size. Despite being studied for over 80 years, the geoglyphs, which were designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1994, are still a mystery to researchers. What are the Nazca lines? There are three basic types of Nazca lines. Straight lines, geometric designs, and pictorial representations. In this video I will talk about the Nazca figure known as the hummingbird. The hummingbird geoglyph in Nazca is approximately 320 feet long or 97.5 meters and 216 feet wide or 65.8 meters, making it a great representation for this small animal. Let's take a closer look at the figure's morphological traits. The figure consists of two feet with three, three digits on each foot. The feet are directly coming out of the body without any legs connecting the body and the feet. The figure has a pointed tail consisting of ten lines the middle line is more than twice the length of the outer lines. The length of the tail is 29 meters. The figure has pointed wings with each wing consisting of six lines. The wingspan measures 216 feet or 65.8 meters. The figure has an extreme long beak. The beak of the figure is longer than the body not including the tail. The beak is 40 meters long. The body is 25 meters. So let's compare the morphology of the figure to the morphology of the actual hummingbird. Hummingbird legs are extremely small, short and stubby to reduce weight. They are also quite weak. Because of this hummingbirds do not hop like other birds. Hummingbirds have four toes, three toes in the front and one toe, also called the hallux, in the back of the foot. The hallux works much the same way a human thumb does and allows the hummingbird to hang on to a branch or wire. The Nazca figure is depicted with three digits. That does not mean the figure does not depict the hummingbird. It could mean that from the perspective the figure is depicted, only three digits are possible to view. Like the example you see here. A hummingbird has ten tail feathers. These tail feathers are called retrices and are divided into five tail feathers per side. The tail feathers are numbered from the inside out with retrix 1 being the two tail feathers in the center and retrix 5 being the tail feathers on the outside. The Nazca figure has 10 lines with 5 lines per side matching the description of the hummingbird tail. When we compare the wings we can see that they are both pointed. The wings spread out in a straight line. The short feet, the tail and the wings of the Nazca figure qualified to identify it as a hummingbird. Before we continue to the beak of the Nazca figure, let's take a moment to appreciate this spectacular bird.
most special feature of the Nazca figure is the extremely long beak. The beak is longer than the body of the figure. There is only one bird in the entire world that has a beak longer than the rest of the body. The name of this bird is the sword-billed hummingbird, also known as Ensefira Ensefira. The sword-billed hummingbird is a neotropical species of hummingbird from the Andean region of South America. It is the sole member of the genus Ensefira and is characterized by its unusually long bill. It is the only bird to have a beak longer than the rest of its body. Ensefira uses its bill to drink nectar from flowers with long corollas and has, a, and has co evolved with the species Passiflora mixta. Ensefira is found throughout tropical montane cloud forest of Bolivia, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and Venezuela. It is found at higher elevations of 1,700 to 3,300 meters, but the most common occurrences are between 2,400 and 3,100 meters. This is a preferred habitat due to the concentration of nectar producing flowers. It is a year-round resident of all three Andes ranges with no known migration patterns. While the species is considered to have stable numbers and a wide geographic range, it is unevenly distributed and hard to find, making it the species difficult to research. Lengths are 13 to 14 centimeters from the tail tip to the base of the bill, with males slightly larger on the average than females. The bill of a sword-billed hummingbird can be over 10 centimeters. The bill of the Nazca figure is 40 meters. That makes the scale of the figure 400 to 1. The figure has been enlarged 400 times its real size. Only one bird can sip from the angel's trumpet. This one, the sword bill. Its bill is actually longer than its body. It has the longest bill, relative to body, of any bird in the world. And that remarkable beak and equally long tongue allows the sword bill to feed where no other bird can. And a big bill can have other uses. In 2019, a team of scientists from Japan published a new study on the bird geoglyphs at the Nazca Lines in Peru that made head headlines around the world. The researchers determined that many of the animals represented in the ancient designs were actually bird species alien to Peru, and this opens new questions like why were these birds carved on the earth 2000 years ago? According to the co-author of the study, Masaki Eda from the Hokkaido University Museum, until now the birds in these drawings have been identified based on general impressions of a few morphological traits present in each figure. We closely noted the shapes and relative sizes of the birds, beaks, heads, necks, bodies, wings, tails and feet and compared them with those of modern birds in Peru. As noted by experts, despite the fact that the birds drawn on the desert floor do exist in Peru, they are located in parts of the country far away from where the Nazca lands sit today. Our findings show that they drew exotic birds, not local birds, and this could be a clue as to why they drew them in the first place.
According to life science, Stephanie Pappas, an etching once identified as hummingbird, actually portrays a hermit, a subgroup of hummingbirds known to live in the forested regions of northern and eastern Peru, rather than the southern desert where the lines are situated. The hermit was recognized on the basis of three pointed toes, long thin beak and elongated tail feathers. Comparatively, most hummingbirds have forked or fan-shaped tails. Due to its long and thin bill, short legs, three toes facing the same direction and a long tail with an elongated middle section, the previously identified hummingbird is reclassified as a hermit. In Peru, long and pointed tails only occur in hermits, whereas the tails of typical hummingbirds are forked or fan-shaped. When I read an article about the study, I could not understand why the report identified it as a hermit and not as ward-billed hummingbird. So let's to take a look at the four arguments. Number one, it's long and thin bill. Number two, short legs. Number three, three toes facing the same direction. Number four, a long tail with an elongated middle section. When we look at this image of a sword-billed hummingbird, we can clearly see it has extremely short legs and three toes facing the same direction. So let's look at the argument about its long and thin bill. The proportions of the Nazca figure clearly shows that the beak of the figure is longer than that of its body. As I stated earlier, the only bird in the world that has a beak longer than the body is the sword-billed hummingbird. The hermit with the longest bill is called a long-billed hermit. So let's compare this bird with the Nazca figure and the sword-billed hummingbird. The bill of the long-billed hermit is much shorter in proportion to the body than the Nazca figure is. The bill of the sword-billed hummingbird has the same proportion to the body as the Nazca figure. The fourth argument is that the pointy tail only occur in hermits, whereas the tail of typical hummingbirds are forked or fan-shaped. In this image you can clearly see a sword-billed hummingbird with a pointy tail. I decided to contact Eda Masaki from the Hokkaido University Museum that was part of the trio that performed the study. I sent an email and asked if he could send me the full paper of the study. Mr. Masaki was kind enough to reply to my email and sent me the document with the study. In a follow-up email I asked if they had considered if the Nazca figure could represent, represent a sword-billed hummingbird and presented my arguments. In his reply he responded that he could not agree with my idea because of the tail of the sword-billed hummingbird is different from the Nazca figure. In my reply back I sent images of sword-billed hummingbirds with pointed tails. In the reply back from Mr. Masaki he wrote, the picture is very similar to the geoglyph there is no doubt that the figure could depict a sword-billed hummingbird. The sword-billed hummingbird is a tropical bird that has no known migration patterns, so it is not a bird that could have migrated to Nazca. So why did the creators of the Nazca lines choose to depict it? When we take into consideration the other two glyphs I have explored in previous videos, we can see a pattern evolve. None of the three animals are located to the Nazca region. The sword-billed hummingbird, the maned wolf and the capuchin monkey are all animals that don't live in or near the Nazca region. And all three have extreme and unique body parts. The sword-billed hummingbird has an extreme long bill. The maned wolf has extreme long legs. And the capuchin is perhaps the most intelligent animal in all of America.